God bless you. How are you? How are you feeling? Amen. Nice to see you again. Praise God.
Lord God. In the spirit of hate, Almighty Lord Jesus. Let us promote your love. But let us, Almighty God, have that genuine love. That agape love, Almighty God. It's an agape love, oh Lord Jesus. It's not, it's not like conditional, like the world's way. Uh-uh. It's an agape love, Almighty God. Father, oh Lord Jesus, this nation needs you. justice, God. You are the justice. We know, we know, we know that the world is corrupt. You know why? Those of us that serve you, God. Those of us that are living by the Spirit here and we and know the truth, Almighty God. Because the, the whole, the whole, the whole politician, the whole government is corrupt because it's full of lies. Oh God, the media is filled with lies. Let the saints not fall into the, the underlies of the enemy. Let us not fall into the deception, oh my God. Because the Bible clearly says that even in the last days, even the elect will be deceived. Let us not be one of those. Let us not be deceived by our emotions. Let us not be betrayed by our emotions. But let us, oh my God, be driven by the love of God. Be driven by the power of God. Be disciplined by the power of God. Oh God, be self-controlled by the power of God. Oh God, sometimes this is not favorable. But you know what? It wasn't favorable back in your days. It wasn't favorable when the prophets opened their mouth. It wasn't favorable when they opened their mouth and they started proclaiming the word of God. No, it wasn't. It didn't fall right into anyone's ears or hearts. But it caught those that needed to the power of the resurrection and to that we see you Jesus we're not going to be popular with everyone the word clearly says in 1st of John 5 18 that this world belongs to the enemy the rulers of the heirs is the enemy the kingdom of the enemy but I, but it says but for those that are in the kingdom of God oh those that are in the kingdom of God be ruled by the enemy. The enemy is under their feet because Jesus defeated him a long time ago. Those that are walking with God, those that believe and walk with God, they go above that. But the word, of the Bible is clear with one thing, that the world rulers of the heirs is the prince of darkness. It's the prince of darkness that rules so We said, why so much violence? Why? Why? Why can't we come together? Because also we, we call to God when we want him to come. And he listens. I just say, Hallelujah. it's good to bow our knee. It's good to bow our knee with the with our brother and sister. But I hope we bow in our knee to the God, to God Almighty. I hope we bow in our knee first to Him. Because He is first. And everything else comes after. Because when we go to Him, He gives us the way how to come against everything else. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I'm going to say it. I, it's, it's not going to be popular with everybody. But this is who God is. Jesus. The, the principles, the biblical principles are still the same. God is still on the throne. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and Omega. Our strength comes from Him. But Father, I thank you that you will bring justice. Thank you that you will bring reform. I thank you that you will bring a revival. Oh yeah. Because everything that is, everything, those that believe in you, those that are walking in you, it says, God, that what they thought was for evil, you will turn it around for their good. What they thought was for evil, it's coming around for good. You come in for us as well. You come in on our behalf. Father, you, your word says in Romans 8, 28, that all things
things. All things work together. All things work together for the good of those. Meaning good and bad. For the good of those that trust God. For his purpose. Santo. For his purpose. For those that love him. Father, we love you. Hallelujah. Our hearts are screaming. We love you, God. Our hearts are screaming. Hallelujah. And guess what, God? Our hearts are bleeding. Our hearts are bleeding. Although the other people that people are reacting different to it, many of our hearts are bleeding. Yes, Lord Jesus. But our hearts are bleeding for the injustice. Jesus understood it that as he lay, as he stood on the cross. Yes, his heart bled. Lord. His heart bled for the people. His love poured out for the people. But we know that we will see it come to pass. That we will see justice come to pass. And we thank you this morning. Yes, Let's worship God. Just let him. Just let him in. Amen. Just let him in. Thank you, Jesus. It's not going to cost you anything. He didn't ask you for money. He didn't ask you to, to, to drop everything. He says, come as you are. And I will help you overcome. I will help you. I will help you. Glory be to God. But you must be. A participant. We have to be participants of his love. So he says, come as you are. Come as you are. Let him in. Let him in. The days are getting nicer. It's getting hot. Don't go back to the don't go back to your old ways. Everybody keeps saying there's a new way. I mean the new the new norm. your life and let him do what he can do for you. Let him show you how to love. Let him show you how to overcome. Let him show you how to, how to defeat your own ways. The things that you've been struggling for so long. Just let him in. And with that, I'm just going to step aside now. I'm going to ask the prophet to come in and worship. And again, just Open your heart and be receptive to this. To not this, to him. And as you worship, just let the music, let the words go right into your heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, God. Amen. The first song um, that I will be starting off for worship is Glory it's called Word by Anthony Brown, if you want to look it up. <clears throat> but it's an easy song, and I feel like this mic got lower. Santo, hallelujah. Sorry. Sorry. Gloria a Dios, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, God. Maybe, maybe Pastor Jackie's voice is just a little bit louder. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alábalo. <laughs> Glory. Santo. You know, it talks about... No matter what, we may feel like we're not worthy. We may we may feel like we're not worth it, worth the time, worth the sacrifice, worth a moment. But God thinks we are. And as she said, he sacrificed his son's life. Jesus Christ went on the cross to die for you, for me, for everybody that is out there, for everybody who is afflicted, for the brokenhearted. He did not come for the people who are perfect or who think they're perfect. Because what's the definition of perfect? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. And he sacrificed his life because he thought that we were worth it. Amen.
something has to break. Back here, Sean. Amen. Ooh. How many of you just love God? How many of you are just thankful for being alive?
just stone. If you're home, if you're with us here, stand to your feet. Or in the park. In the park. In the park. You got your headphones, you're at work. Wherever you are, listening to this at the moment. Glory. Just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. Just want to give you the encouragement that you may not be able to have for yourself today. But I want you guys to just praise. I'm not going to count. You guys could just join in. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in setting up. We get so wrapped up in, okay, I'll do this at this time, I'll do this at that time. But you can't put God on a schedule because it's on His timing. Hallelujah, yes, God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to sing this song really quick. Um, and I want you guys to just praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whenever you feel like it. Amen. Don't worry about how loud you get. It's okay. Amen. We're lying. We're going to roar.
tell us. He knew that we were worth saving. And that's why he gave his life. That's why he gave his life. Because he knew we were worth saving. We are just not anything in this world. We are ambassadors for him. We are his mouthpiece. We are his spokesperson. We are members of his body. He loves us and that's why he died with his arms open, open for all humanity, just not some, but for all of us, for all of us. I'm so grateful, but today I challenge you, accept them into your life. Tomorrow is not promise or guarantee. We have to live for what we have today. Don't wait for tomorrow to do what he has called you to do today. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. Something has to break. And I'm here today to tell you that you have to break. See, because when you break, everything that's on you has to break. And when God begins to mold you together, you don't have to worry about what was on you because it is no longer in existence upon you. Amen. You have to break. You have to break. Amen. Glory be your name, my God. God bless you all today, Glory. all that is watching, all that have joined us personally. We, we have to continue to move forth. We have to continue to move forth to do the will of God. So today I challenge you to accept them into your life. Today I ask you to open your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 2. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. There are so many things going around, going on around us in this world that I truly need you to understand. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. There is no doubt in my mind that he loves you. First of Peter chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 11 to 12. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my God. Glory be your name, Heavenly Father. First of Peter chapter 2. Verses 11 and 12. When you have it, just give me an amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such a good, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds. I'm going to say that one more time. So they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Amen. Father God, I come before thy presence giving you glory and honor. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. for this day that you have given us to worship yes. and praise your name. Thanking you for another day of life that we have awakened, Heavenly Father, to shout glory to you, Heavenly Father, that we may continue to bless you, Gracias, not only Lord. at this hour, but throughout the course of this day, my God, so we may exhort you and glorify you, that we can be examples to those we surround ourselves with, that we can be an example to all those that see us in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You may have a seat, but do not depart from the presence of the Lord. Wherever you find yourself, please just take a moment to take this in. Absorb what the Lord is telling you. Do not take what the Lord is saying that you can give it to other people for them. You need to take what the Lord is bringing to you before you can distribute to anyone else. We are so fast to say, oh my God, you missed this powerful word. If you were there or if you heard this the God would have spoken to you. But when the person says, what did he say to you? He said, oh, I was too busy. I, but I know what he said for you. I know what he's, if the Lord can speak to you before you speak to others, you need to check yourself. You need to break yourself so that you can take in that word. See, and then you can testify and say, man, the word, the Lord gave me a word. He's spoken to my life. 
I am a testimony of the things that God has done in my life. And the same way he's doing it in my life, I know he could do it in your life. We serve a loving God. A loving God. And today's title, I want to speak to you about the war against the soul. Amen. Because that's what we are fighting. It is a war against our soul. Amen. Every day we have struggles. Every day we deal with something. You don't need to tell me what you're dealing with. But we deal with something. But are you ready to deal with that? See, as believers, we are aliens and strangers in this world. We are aliens. We are passing through. We are foreigners to the non-believers. We are to be an example to these non-believers. How we live our life is, should, should display the characters of Christ in us. That when other people see us, they know without a doubt, something is different. Amen. Something's different. Because if those people that knew you from the world, and they see you now, and you're speaking about being a believer, but they see no difference, you better check yourself. Amen. Because there has to be a difference. Amen. There has to be a different glow within you. Amen. You got that? I said within you, not within outside you. of you, but within you. Because the glow comes from inside. And as it comes outside, people begin to see it. Amen. See, when you walk into a room, people will feel the difference. Amen. They will know who you are. Yes. There's a saying that says, tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. Amen. People won't believe it. See, people won't believe it. You can walk with people of the world. See, but you have to be that example. Amen. You don't have to be a follower. You're supposed to be a leader. Amen. Problem is, everybody thinks that they're a leader, but they're not leading. Amen. They're not leading. Because when you lead, you lead people into the right path. Amen. Into the right path. We read these scriptures here, and, and, and I want to bring it to you because, see, this is what I meant last week when I spoke about being loaded and ready. See, when you're loaded and ready, see, you know the fights that you're going into. See, you you out there, because the scripture clearly says to us, it, the Bible doesn't lie. The Bible is clear when it speaks to us. It says, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain, to abstain from sinful desires. The only way you can abstain from, sin, from, from, from sinful desires is by being loaded and ready. Loaded and ready with the word of God. Because if you're not ready and loaded with this word in you, you your, your flesh will overtake everything else. And that's why it is a war against the soul. Amen. Amen. Against the soul. Live such good lives amongst the pagans. See, we are supposed to live good lives amongst the pagans. We are not supposed to live like the pagans, Amen. but we are supposed to live good lives amongst the pagans Amen. so that they can see the difference in you. They can yes. feel the difference in you. That they can want what's in you. Yes, hallelujah. But if they just want to be with you for what you have, you better check yourself. If they don't look to change, there's a problem. See, you can walk a horse to the water, but you can't force the horse to drink the water, right. right? I can bring you the word of God, but I cannot force you to accept the word of Amen. God. That has to be willingly. Amen. See, because when you accept the word willingly, everything else is over. Amen. See, everything else is over. Right. You just broke everything that was in you. Because you willingly accepted it. See, when something is forced on you, it's not going to work the same. It's not. Glory be to God. None of us can walk a horse to the water and push the head down and force it to drink. I think you will fall into the water before <laughs> the horse drinks water. It ain't easy. But those are the struggles that we deal with day to day. With our soul. Yes. 
See, we, we, we look to do good, but the soul is there fighting back. And then you having that struggle and you're going back and forth. But when you are loaded and ready and that word is in you, yeah. you tell them, Satan, you got to go. Satan, there's no place for you here. When you begin to praise the name of God, everything around you has to change. The atmosphere has to change. But that is when you praise the word of God. When you praise his name, yeah. it's over. It's over in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, live such good lives amongst the pagans that they accuse you of doing wrong. That's all they can do. Because you're walking around and not indulging in their things. Then they tell, oh, you wrong. You wrong. You know? Hey, I'm going to this party. I don't want to. Oh, you wrong. What happened? You was always there. That's the problem. I was always there. But now I don't want to be there. Amen. I went there because I felt like being there. Now I don't feel like being there. And no, I'm not going to go there. You want to go, see you later. But don't mean I have to go. And if that's the only thing that keeps us as friends, then today I tell you, bye-bye. See you later. We got to break this apart. It's true. Because people will try to keep you in the same place they're at. Amen. Just to keep themselves comfortable. That's right. But God didn't call us to be comfortable Amen. in a certain place. He didn't call us to be complacent people. He called us to be ambassadors for his yes. kingdom. And an ambassador has to know how to move. An ambassador needs to know how to speak. Amen. You don't have to be like everybody else. That's right. And even when people accuse you of being wrong, you don't have to fight with them. The right. truth will always come out. That's people right. will accuse you of anything and everything they can think of. They will make up lies about you. Yeah. They will get other people to believe their lies. They become compulsive liars that they say a lie and they believe the lie Amen. because it sounds good. Yeah. But not everything that sounds good is good. That's right. You have to know. And that's why we pray for discernment. That's why when you're loaded and ready and, 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 and you just go and you have that prayer life and you have that relationship with God. When people come and tell you a lie, you can look at them and know they're lying. And you don't got to be scared to tell somebody, listen, that, that sounds a little off. Doesn't sound correct. Because if you begin to agree with them, all you're doing is encouraging them to continue to lie. It is not our job to agree with everybody. Right. It is not everybody's job to agree with us. Right. But as believers, we are supposed to unite to one another and become one body in Christ, not two, three bodies. Amen to that. We're supposed to be one body in Christ. Amen. See, Amen. though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Amen. He's coming to visit us. Yes. He's coming to visit us. It's not on your time that he's going to come and visit us. Don't think that you have it all planned out. Come on. Don't think that, hey, I sent God an invitation. I know what day he's coming. That's a lie that the devil has implanted in your mind. Because the Bible clearly tells us we don't know the day, the hour, or the minute that he is coming. Not even Jesus knew it. And that was his son. What makes you think you know it? You better think again. I don't care what type of degree you think you got. I don't care how many studies you, you put into this. You will not be able to determine that day. But I can guarantee you one thing. He is coming. Amen. He is coming. And that's not a lie. That's the truth. It's important to remain loaded and ready. Amen. Because this war is against the soul. Amen. See, when you look at this, right? The scriptures that we read. See, Peter. Peter, the advice that Peter was offering the people here. It, it sounds exactly like what Jesus was teaching at the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. If you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, you will see 
that Jesus speaks of the Beatitudes. He speaks of the saw and the light, the fulfillment of the law, murder, adultery, divorce, oaths, eye for eye, love for enemies. And it goes on through chapter 6 and, and, and so forth and so forth. But I want to bring a point to you. I want to show you. all I, I said that what Peter was speaking here, what he was offering to the people here, if you look at, verse, at chapter 5, verses 14 to 16 with me, Right? Where he speaks of the salt and the light. It'll tell you. This is what it says. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. You are the light of the world. Amen. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on this stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. When you walk in the house, that house better light up. It better light up. But this is what I want you to see. It says, in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds, that they may see your good deeds, yes. that they may see your good deeds, yes. and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes. Amen to that. This is what Jesus was teaching the people at that time on that mountain. Now we have Peter. He's there speaking, teaching, offering the people and telling them the very same thing. See, that's why it is compatible because the, the, the Bible says at the ending of verse 12, so that they may see your good deeds Amen. and glorify God the day he visits us. Mm -hmm. Jesus was teaching the people, be the light. Be the light, not the darkness. Be the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify God. Anything that we do should glorify God. If you're doing something and it's not glorifying God, you need to check yourself. You need to analyze what's going on. Where are you going wrong? We are to be the salt and the light of this world. Salt gives flavor to something. The light brightens the things up. What are you giving flavor to? Are you bringing flavor to the word of God? Are you seasoning it as it comes into you? When you release the word of God, when you, when you walk around people, what do they see? Is there a light glowing from you? What is your soul displaying? Last week I told you if your actions are above reproach, even hostile people will end up praising God. Amen. There's no difference. See, if you if you are ready and loaded, and you walk into a room that is just hostile, you can feel the tension. But doesn't mean you have to join the tension. Amen. Doesn't mean you have to adjust to the atmosphere of the room. See, I don't care what's going on in that room. When you walk in, there has to be a change. Amen. A change for the right. Amen. A change for the right. When you walk into a room, it's not a question of taking sides with anybody. It's not a question of picking who's right and who's wrong. It's finding the solution to resolve the matter. See, there is a solution for every problem. Thank you, Lord. For every problem. Amen to that. You just have to know how to calculate the situation. Okay, what's going on here? Father God, give me discernment. Father God, give me the words that when I speak, both parties will change. Amen. Both parties will see a difference. Both parties will come to a mutual understanding. Yeah. And know that you are in the midst of it. Amen. We serve a good God. Yes, we do. A good God. Yes, you do. have to remember that Peter's, his followers, his readers, they were scattered among unbelieving Gentiles mm -hmm. who were inclined to believe and spread vicious lies about Christians. We still live in these times. Amen. This was going on then, and it still goes on now. When you don't agree with someone, they will come and speak vicious lies about you. Mm -hmm. 
they will fill the ears of many with lies. And people will fall into it. Amen. People will fall into it. Amen. And this is why I say, when you stay loaded and ready, people can hear all the lies that they want. But when they see you, what do they see? Amen. Do they see the lies that were spoken? Or do they see you Amen. for who you are? That's right. Because as a child of God, we are not to react the way the world reacts. Amen. We are to be different. In everything that we do, we are to be different. You, the way we walk, the way we speak, the way we teach. Yes, yes, yes. We are to be different. Yes. Unbelievers will always speak about the believers. But as a believer, it is your job to show the unbeliever that that's all they are. Unbelievers. But the beauty is that when, 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 you're, when you can be a testimony, when you can use your life to testify to someone, yes. they'll you change. To testify. They will change. They will change. I know that I know that I know they will change. Yes, Lord. You don't have to force God on nobody. The apostles didn't walk around. Peter didn't walk around forcing himself on nobody or forcing God on anybody. He just walked around and spoke the truth. But see, there were so many. Because we can we can read and we can we can continue to speak. But we've spoken about how when, when, when people enough. heard that Peter was going to be in town, what did they do? They broke this, they brought the sick out to the sidewalk. That's right. They didn't bring him so that he can touch him. They said, no, uh -huh. that man is full of power. He is full of Christ, the Holy Spirit in him. Jesus. All he has to do is walk by, and his shadow will heal the people. Wow. But what it was, it wasn't Peter nor his shadow, but it was Jesus of Nazareth yes. that resided in him. Wow. And when you allow Jesus of Nazareth yes. to reside in you, yes. you will walk, and your shadow will change people's lives. That's right. Your shadow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you don't have to be around people that just seek for you to make them happy. At some given time and point, you got to let them go. Because if not, they are like leeches. They just leech onto you. They just want to drain what's inside of you. They want to take the Holy Spirit and break the Holy... They want to contaminate the Holy Spirit in you. Now you say he could. Huh? There's a difference. I said they would want to contaminate the Holy Spirit in you. But now it's up to you. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to allow itself to be contaminated for you. Goes about his business. And it leaves you right where you started. All fleshy. Mm -hmm. All yeah, fleshy. It's so true. Because the flesh gets contaminated. Yes. Not the Holy Spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why we must learn to kill the flesh and liven the spirit in us. Amen. We have to learn Hallelujah. to kill the flesh and yes. liven the Holy Spirit. Yes. I'm not telling you, you got to kill yourself so the Holy Spirit can rise. Yes. You got to kill the flesh, Hallelujah. the flesh, the, the flesh that has the desires. Yes. You see, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh that wants that injection from the world. Yes. The flesh that becomes addicted to the things it shouldn't get yes. addicted, addicted to. Oh, you have to kill it. You have to kill it. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't look for, for, for um, your desires. It doesn't look to be addicted to nothing. Because the Holy Spirit just sees the word in you. And when you feed it, when you feed it, you don't need a needle to, to, to fill your Holy Spirit. You just need the word of God. You don't need a joint. To fill the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. You don't need no rum and coke. You don't need no absolute. You don't need no Alice. You don't need no Grand Marnier. You don't need no whiskey. You don't need no scotch. You just need the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will fill you up and you will dance like David dance. You don't need to wake up with the hangover and say, Oh, I'm going to need another hand. 
Dominican. I need the old English. I need, I need my Laura. I need Corona. I need, I need, I need. What you need is the word of God. The word of God will cure all things and cure all desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was in the world. That's why I know all these drinks. And there's many more that I can name, but where I got to go, keep going through it. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, I was there. I had my own little bar, Black Label, Puerto Rican rum, 100 proof. I had it all. You name it, it was there. But when I got Christ into my life, when I accepted him and I brought him in, I realized those things was nothing but a destruction to my body. At one point, I, I, I felt bad throwing them out. So I was giving it out. But and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Why give somebody something that was a destruction to you? Amen. So what did I do? I used it as a liquid dream. Right down the sink. That's right. Cleaned all the, all the systems. I bet you those pipes were cleaner than clean. Drano didn't have anything on it. When you begin to realize that it is a war against your soul, and that's all Satan seeks, it's your soul. You had that chance to turn things around, and now you can go and save a soul and not destroy a soul. Amen. Amen. You don't need none of those things. You don't. When you learn to kill the flesh and live in the spirit. See, we, we must stop catering to the flesh. Amen. There's too many times that's all we want to do. We want to cater to the things of the flesh. We must praise God until we know the spirit is in us. And when that spirit is in us, we have to make sure that it is strong and the cry of the flesh is weak. Because the stronger the spirit becomes in you, the weaker the flesh becomes. Yeah, your flesh will tell you, no, you, you're killing me, not today. I'm your friend. He's a liar. <laughs> because the flesh works with the devil. Mm -hmm. That's how the flesh works. See, the flesh don't want you to praise God. See, not until you are ready, not until you are loaded and ready. You, you, you know, you have to be loaded and ready. So that the, 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 the cry of the flesh becomes weak. Amen. See, I'm going to give you a, a, a good example here. See, I'm giving you the example of you go to the gun store, right? And you walk in, and they got all these type of guns. Man, you walked in there. You knew, you knew what your flesh desired. Man, I, I want that 45, you know. Um, yeah, that 45. And, and then the clocks came out later. But, but you walk into the gun store, and then they have the display. And you're looking now. You know your mind went in there set to buy a 45. But when you start looking at all these other guns, you're like, man, maybe I can take this one and this one. Or maybe I could just change up, come back to that one later. That shotgun there looks good, you know. But, but you, you're in the store. And, and in the store, you see... All this, all this, all, all these guns and, and the different type of guns and all this <laughs> artillery and everything. And now you're looking, looking, you say, maybe, you know, I, went, I came to buy one, but maybe I'll take two. Maybe I'll take two, right? But if you buy the gun and you leave the store, what is that gun going to do for you? In your mind, you say, well, that gun's going to protect me. Gun's not going to do nothing for you. You know why? You went in the store, you bought the gun, but you didn't buy the bullets. <laughs> they, I did, I, all right, let's listen up carefully. Listen up carefully. I didn't make a mistake here. I said, you went in the store, you saw all these guns, you got so excited, you bought the gun, but didn't buy the ammunition. <laughs> so you left the store, now you all hyped up, you ready. I'm going, I'm going to test this out. You go all the way home, you know. Now you want to test this gun that you bought out. But when you got it, you were ready, but you weren't loaded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we are in the flesh. Right. See, but when you're in the spirit, see, you're loaded and you're ready. You're loaded with the word of God. You don't got to pay for this. Amen. This is free. You don't got to walk in there and say, what? Well, this has so much ammunition yes. that you don't need. See, you can leave your house, but if this is in you, you're loaded. Amen. You just got to know how to fire. Amen. You see? 
you got to wear it with me. You got you to gotta understand. See, that, that's that part there, right? This is just an example I'm giving you. Some people say, oh, I'm not that stupid. If you ain't working with, walking with the word of God, then you better check yourself again. But I, that's for another day. That's for another day. Not today. Not today, Satan. Not today. I want to speak about the war against the soul. Because, see, Satan walks around loaded and ready. See, he just waits for you to open that door. He waits for you to, to fall into a situation or circumstance and just give in. Because the minute you give in, he walks in. He doesn't wait for an invitation. He doesn't. He just walks right in. He has no respect for you or your family. That's right. He has no respect for your home. That's right. He has no respect for your property. That's right. None. But now I, I want to show you a little something, right? Because I gave you the example of the gun, right? And, and, and even if you walk into the store, you buy the gun, and let's just say you buy the ammunition. A clip can only hold but so much. After that clip is empty, you have to reload. See, but when you are full of the Holy Spirit, as long as you praise God every day, you read the word every day, you don't have to worry about reloading. It will automatically load itself. Amen. See, but today I brought a little friend with me. See, I brought a little friend with me today. Yep, he's so little he fitted in my pocket. You see this? Take a good look. This is a water gun, right? That's all it is, it's a water gun. Now, without the water, what happens? There's no use to it. Just shoots air, right? <laughs> I'm glad we are on the same page. See, in order for this to work, it has to get loaded with water. Uh -huh. When you load the water, then you can shoot. But when it's empty, you got to go back and reload. And then you can shoot, right? But you know what happens with a lot of Christians? They walk around, and they're walking around with air. Uh -huh. Because they didn't fill themselves with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 38, he, whosoever believeth in me, as scripture says, rivers of living waters will flow within. Amen. He who believeth in me. Amen. Yeah. Abundance of water. Amen. The water will never run out because a river of living waters will always flow from within. And when you are loaded and ready, you cannot be empty. Amen. But if, see, it's a water gun. So automatically some kids be, oh, that's a water gun, that's nice. And they buy it and then they want to shoot it. But when they learn to load it up, what do they do? When they see it empty, they want to load it back up. Right? As adults, we see ourselves empty now. Amen. We see ourselves empty now. But we don't want to load ourselves up with the word of God. Why? Because we want to feed the flesh. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. This war is against your soul. Amen. Walking in this world is a war against our soul. Because we face situations every day. Amen. Financially. Matrimony. Family wise. We face situations. And we cave in to the things of the world. Today I invite you not to give in. Today I invite you to stay loaded. Yes. Today, today I invite you to accept Christ into your life if you never have. If you never have. If we do not put water into this gun, it just shoots air. What are you shooting? Are you shooting air? Every time you speak to people, are you just filling them with air? Mm. Mm. Air, air, air. That's hot. Santo. And let me tell you, if you fill somebody up with a lot of air, when they explode, they're just going to release air. But if you fill them up with the word of God, when they explode, you know what's going to come out? The word of God. Amen. The living waters that's inside of them. Thank that's you. what people are going to see. We say, 
I'm living in an overflow. What type of overflow are we living in? Amen. Amen. We are fighting a fight against our souls. Mm -hmm. But when you're full of the Holy Spirit, the flesh cannot raise, cannot rise up against anything. Anything. See, the next time you are about to make a decision or, or you're going to react to something, just pause for a minute. Amen. Just take a pause. Yes. Next time you hear people speaking lies or saying things, don't react. That's what people look for. They look for the reaction. Yes. So they can say, I told you so. Uh -huh. Learn. See, I've learned. I've learned that I used to be a, I used to react fast. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I always reacted fast. Yes. But because of the love of God, because of the Holy Spirit in me, I've been able to adjust all that. Amen. And it's not recently, but you know, I still get upset, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. But my flesh can never rise up against the spirit within me. The spirit within me, I know is strong. I can get angry, but I can think. See, somebody can come and say something to me. And if you see me like a little uh, smirk, okay, that's the flesh saying, okay, you know what, get ready. But see, and, and when I rebuke that, and then you see a smile in my face, which you hardly will see. But when you see a smile in my face, then you can say, okay, the Holy Spirit got him. See, the Holy Spirit will always overtake the flesh when you allow it to. The fruits of the Spirit, they lead you to it. See, when you are loaded and ready, you should be walking with the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 going down will tell you the fruits of the Spirit. But when you walk around with the Holy Spirit, you should be walking around with joy, peace, and love. Yes. Patience, goodness, and kindness. Yes. Gentleness, faithfulness, yes. and self-control. Mm -hmm. See, everybody puts the self-control to the side and say, I'm human. I'm human. I still live in the flesh. You shouldn't be living in the flesh. Amen. You should be living in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body is made up of flesh. Amen. But the inside should be full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because when the inside is full of the Holy Spirit, your war becomes easier. Amen. You will be walking in victory. Amen. See, you got to take a pause. You got to ask yourself, am I moving in the flesh or the spirit? What I'm about to say, is it fleshly or from the spirit? Amen. Am I looking to retaliate in the flesh or am I retaliating in the spirit? Am I displaying the light in me or am I jumping into the darkness? Because there's no darkness in me, I'm sorry. When you have Christ in you, there cannot be no darkness. We can't be like the light, like, like, like the light, you know, you're the, with the switch. Well, you know what, no, the, the, enough is enough. I, I got to speak up today and shut the light off, you know. It's okay, I'm, in, I, I'm gonna be in the darkness for a couple of hours. Be careful because you might not come out of that darkness. Amen, amen. You may not walk out that darkness. Amen, amen. When dealing with certain situations, we must we, you know, we have a tendency to wing it in life. You know, we believe, oh, I got this. I can handle this. God, you you take care of the tough stuff for me. But this is the light stuff. Might look light to you. But don't let it fool you. Don't let it fool you. David looked like light stuff to Goliath. See, we want to walk around being that giant. But David was no light stuff. Amen. David was full of the Spirit. Amen. That Holy Spirit was upon him. See, so let the people look at you. Let the people lie about you. You don't have to worry about that because the truth will always come out. The truth will set the others free. Amen. The truth will set them free. See, we must realize that there are countless things we will not pick up on unless we are moving in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. There are things that are going to be happening. And if you're not full of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to pick up on what's happening. The flesh will lead you to believe something else is happening. But the Spirit will show you what is truly happening. You have to stay prepared because this fight is not. 
the kids. This fight is not yours to fight. Put it like that. The fight is not yours. See, when you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it clearly says, For our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the darkness, the darkness, the principalities of all of this evil, of the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's what this fight is against. Your soul will fight against these evil things. But when you are full of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to control your fight. You will not look at the things worldly. Amen. I'm not telling you you have to be perfect because none of us is perfect. Amen. I fall short of the glory every day. I hear things at times that will bother my spirit for the moment. Mm -hmm. But and then, glory be to God that that all gets washed away. Amen. Because when you have that river of living waters inside of you, no matter what comes your way, it will wash itself away. You do not have to fall into the trap of the enemy. See, when you work, worship is not something our flesh wants to do. There are times the flesh don't want you to get up and pray. Right. There are times the flesh don't want you to say it in the name of Jesus. There are times the flesh wants you to keep your mouth quiet. But I'm here today to tell you that praise is a sacrifice. In that respect. See, when the flesh is seeking other desires, and you could just say, not today, Satan, not tomorrow, or not never. Today I have decided I'm going to praise God. When you make it the first thing in the morning, when you awaken, you will feel a light of load on yourself. Worship keeps us from being controlled by our flesh. Yes. That's what worship does. Amen. It keeps us from being controlled by the flesh. Amen. The Bible tells us, God says we are to abstain from fleshly lusts, which are which war against the soul. The, these, these fleshly lusts, the fleshly lusts are things that just, it, it's just a war against the soul. The things we lust after. I don't care what it is. You can lust after sex. You can lust after drugs. You can lust after material goods, being prestige. You can lust after money, after fame, or even power. Yeah. But these things just create havoc yes. in our souls. Yes, mm -hmm. That's all they do. Oh, if only I can get this. Oh, only if I can do that. You know, there's a lot of people that uses their desires as a solution for their problems. They go after certain things and then they want to justify why they're doing it. Well, I only smoked today because I was really feeling down. You know, my friend wasn't feeling too good, so I decided to go join him and, and just smoke with him. You know, God knows my heart. He knows my intention. He knows I really didn't want to do it. Well, why you did it? <laughs> you should have brought out the word of God and let him smoke that. <laughs> you want to roll something up? Walk around with the Bible, rip the page out, roll it up, smoke it. Might do you some good. Might do you some good. You want fame? Read the word of God. That'll bring you fame. May not be the fame that you seek, but it'll bring you fame. You want power? Fill yourself with the Holy Spirit Amen. and see the power pour out of you. Amen. May not be that power you're looking for, but it'll be that Holy Ghost power. Glory, Santo. Nothing has a chance against the Holy Ghost power. You know? Amen. There is a way to resist temptation of the flesh. And that is to worship God. Amen. It must be our first reaction. Amen. When you're speaking to someone, when you walk into a room or someone calls you and they're feeling down and they start talking, you know, we have the ability, we have the power within us to save a life. Amen. When God, you know, when your spirit is feeling unease for an individual, I 
recommend you jump into prayer for that person. Amen. Because that, peer, pray, that person might be contemplating suicide. But your prayer will save their life. Amen. Growing up as a kid, I've seen a lot of drug addicts. I've seen a lot of dope fiends shoot up dope and pass out. Pass out right there. I was a serving guy. I didn't think of anything. But I've come to realize that when they shot that up, they weren't saying, God, help me. Where are their souls at now? Where? Tomorrow's not promise. You have to be right now. Mm. You have to know how to fight against that soul now. Now, now. Our first reaction should always be worship. When you're speaking to someone and you see they're not right, your first reaction should be, Jesus loves you. Let me pray for you. Start a worship. Start a worship. Let them see how good God is in you. Let them see the greatness of God in you. We will always sacrifice joy and the fullness of all God has for us when we move in the flesh. When we move in the flesh, we will sacrifice all the joy that God has placed in us. Amen. We will sacrifice his fullness Amen. in us Amen. when you move in the flesh. Yes. You don't, I, that's something I cannot do. I cannot do it. I can't do it just to make somebody happy. Amen. You want to be happy? Then join me. Amen. I'm not perfect, but I, I'm, I'm full of joy. Amen. I'm full of joy. Joy resides in me. I know. I know. Because I can sit there, and, and when I think, think about the things in the past and the person that I was, I ask God for forgiveness each and every day for it. But when I look at myself now, I sit down and I thank God again. <laughs> because can he do it? Yes, he can. Amen. Before Bob the Builder came in, we had Christ the Builder. Amen. You know, they came up, Bob the Builder, can he fix it? Yes, he can. <laughs> but when you got Christ, Christ the Builder, can he fix it? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He proved it. He proved it way before Bob the Builder came. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Way before Dad the Builder came. <laughs> when you have Christ, it is for you to build. But what are you building? What are you building? Galatians 5.16 and I'm almost finished. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. That's what the Bible says. I just, I'm just offering you something that the Bible says. It's clear. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If you find yourself falling into the flesh, the desires of the flesh, then I'm here today to tell you that you're not walking with the Spirit. Because when you walk with the Spirit, the flesh cannot dictate anything. Amen. It cannot even request a desire when you're walking in the spirit. It will uplift you. Amen. And help you. Amen. Whenever we move in the flesh. And not in the spirit. There is consequences. There are consequences. That we do not want to deal with. But I'm here today to tell you. That our true loyalty. Should be to our citizenship in heaven. And not here on this world. Because this earth will be destroyed. Hallelujah. This earth will be destroyed. Hallelujah. So if you feel that you are a citizen of this world, you will be destroyed with it. Santo. But when you put your loyalty Amen. in the citizenship of the heavens, yes. you cannot be destroyed. Yes. The world can be destroyed, but you will continue 
to have life. Yes. Amen. The life that was promised to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. The life that was promised to us. Yes. What is it that you are seeking? What is it that you're seeking? The Bible is loaded and ready for you. All you have to do is take it and start reading. Thank you, Once you start reading and you begin to fill your spirit, let me tell you something. The war is over. The war is over. But when you start reading this, you know what happens? You fill yourself up with air all yeah. over again. And when you fill yourself up with air, the flesh begins to kick in. You cannot allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, what is it that you seek in life? What is it that you seek in life? The world does not play fair. We know the world doesn't play fair. I don't know about you, but when I sit there and I have those moments that I just start thinking about my childhood, don't get me wrong, because my parents were good parents. So it has nothing to do with my parents. I'm talking about me, 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 me. My parents taught me well. When it comes a time where I started to make choices. And the choices I made, I thought all along were good choices. But I come to realize that I made a lot of bad choices. Only because I wanted to, not because I was forced to. Only because the world was showing me things that I thought would make me rich. But I fooled myself. But I give God all the glory Santo. that he saved me. He saved me from many things. From many things. Gracias, I grew up around a lot of people selling drugs, shooting of drugs, sniffing coke, smoking dust, angel dust, marijuana, taking, taking all type of stuff. Those little tags. I used to come out of school and stay in the street, go to the park and just sit there, have my dice game, smoke, drink. And I thought that was life. I thought I was full of life. But little by little, God began to do things in my life. And I didn't even realize or recognize it was God changing my life or saving my life. All those gunfights we use in. Glory be to God that I can stand here and speak of it today. But when I think of those things, I tell you honestly, I see all the damage, all the hurt that I brought to my mother, my father, the damage I brought to my siblings, because when you're in the world, you don't think about none of these things. None of it. But when you, when, when you get in with Christ, and you begin to analyze these things, and the years that I lost, those songs, you thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for, so you sacrificed your life, so I can be free, so I can be home, so I can tell everyone I know. Glory. Yes, my God, yes, my God. Just rise up to your feet. Lord.
Yes, my God. Yes, my God. See, when I think of all the things that I've done, I truly threw myself before the feet of God. And I've asked Him for forgiveness. And you see, you 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 see where, where true friendship is at. Because a real friend does not dismiss you when you accept Christ into your life. See, when I was in the world and I went to prison, my so-called right-hand man, my so-called right-hand man, when I went to prison, he never even came to visit me. When I reached out to him, you know what he told me? Hey, Mel, I'm sorry, man. You know, I was trying to change my life, man. And, and you know, now I was trying to be a cop. And I, I couldn't come and see you, man, because I was sacrificing myself. It didn't hurt me. You know why it didn't hurt me? Because I wasn't dependent to no one. See, but when you hear those words, bless you. You begin to ask yourself, man. I wasted all these years of my life for what? When they were down and out, I was there. When I was down and out, they weren't there. But I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. And I said, God, thank you. Because the experience that I experienced in the streets, I could use it for the good now. And this is why I say, when I read the Bible, and I got to the book of Acts, it was time for me to act on my life. Amen. See, when I saw, when I saw, and that's right, I'm going to say I saw, because when I read the scriptures, I envisioned the stories. Yes. And when I saw what God did for Paul, yes. I said, God, if you did it for him, you do it for me. Yes. And I'm here today to tell you, if you did it for me, he'll do it for you. Yes. There is nothing that you've done in your life that God won't forgive. God is full of forgiveness. And he shared it in my life. And therefore, I'm here today and I can tell you that I can share it in your life. This isn't something that came overnight. It's not. Hallelujah. I began this journey back in 1995. June of 1995. I don't know about you, but I remember my steps in Christ. I remember how God began to change my life. And here I am, 25 years later, standing strong. Standing strong. Yeah. Only because He allowed me to. Glory to God. You have to be willing. To accept them into your life. You have to be willing to kill the flesh. Can't keep saying this is a process. This is a process. I can guarantee you there's cheeses out there that's gotten processed before you. And that takes a long time to get processed. Okay. Yes. Yes. But this is what God does when you accept them into your life. When you allow him to change you, this is what he does. Thank you, Jesus. I no longer have to work with walk with desires of the world. Thank you, Lord. I walk with the desires of his word. This is why I say you have the power and the ability to save a life or destroy a life. This war that we are fighting. It did not start yesterday. It did not start when you was born. This started thousands and thousands of years ago. There was a war against the souls then. There is a war against the souls now. But you can be used as an instrument to save the souls and not destroy the souls. Amen. 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 Let's close your eyes for a second. I just want you all to meditate there for a second. But for all you that are watching, if there is anyone who hasn't accepted him into your life yet, this is your chance. And I challenge you. I challenge you. 
Granny, if you take a 30-day challenge or you take a challenge that's a worldly challenge to, to, to make someone happy. Well, today I ask you, make Christ happy. Accept them into your life. Accept them into your life. He's free. And I invite any of you that will listen to this later. If you didn't accept them, accept them into your life at that moment. We're all sinners. But if you want to accept them into your life, all you have to do. Confess with your mouth that you are a sinner. And that you, you, you accept them as your Lord and Savior. Gracias, Señor. Hallelujah. Believe with all your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And he resurrected. But from there, continue to praise his name. See, you cannot do the first step and not do the second step. Because the first step is walking into the store to purchase your gun. The second step is the ammunition. Well, accepting Christ into your life is accepting the fact that he died on that cross for you. He shed his blood for you. He paid the price for you. But the second step is filling your soul with his word. With his word. Just tell him, Lord, I stand here before you. As I am. As the sinner that I am. I accept you in my life. Accepting you as my Lord and Savior. And that from this day forth, I will not continue to live the same. I will live for you. For you, Heavenly Father. And I will speak the truth. The truth, the truth, the truth. That as when I walk into the room, I will make a difference. Now, Father God, we come before thy presence, giving you all the glory and honor. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, but most importantly, all that you are about to do in our lives. Yes, Thanking you, Heavenly Father, believe. for believing in us, for believing that we were worthy yes, to die for. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Heavenly Father. And I ask that from this day forth, that we just fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. That the rivers of living water can continue to flow from within. Thank you for the opportunities that you've given us. Thank you for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you for not forgiving us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.